Hey, I'm Kyle with Paul Hammer Supply, makers of the stainless steel and copper distillers and brew kits. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a corn whiskey moonshine mash. You'll need eight and a half pounds of flaked maize, two pounds of crushed malted barley, and either a brew system or a large pot. We're gonna be using Clawhammer's 10 and a half gallon digital electric brewing system. And the first step is to add six and a half gallons of water to your kettle and heat it up to 165 degrees. Once the corn has been added, turn off the heat and stir it in. At this point, we're just going to let the corn sit at a higher temperature to allow it to break down a bit. After this happens and it's able to cool down some, we'll add the barley. You'll notice that within a few minutes, the corn becomes extremely thick and somewhat unmanageable. After mash is complete and the starches have been turned into sugar, this liquid will actually thin out quite a bit. While the corn is sitting, I'm gonna go ahead and get my brew system hoses hooked up. Our system has the capability of adding a pump, which will allow us to recirculate liquid over the grain bed, and I'll be doing that for this mash. Before we can move on, you need to allow the corn to cool down to 148 degrees. All right, the alarm's gone off. It's dropped to 148 degrees. It's time to add this malted barley. First thing I'll do is turn off the pump, lift this, Close my ball valve. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. At this point, it is extremely thick. It's almost a solid mass of corn. Probably could put some salt on this and eat it as grits. Yep, definitely. <laughs> so I'm gonna add my malted barley here. The barley must be crushed and malted for this recipe and it's just kind of sitting on top. I'm not even gonna bother stirring it in. One thing I will do is set the temp on my controller to 148 degrees. So I'll now maintain 148 for the duration of this mash. Open my ball valve and turn the pump back on. You'll leave this sit and recirculate for 60 minutes. You will definitely need to stir while mashing. I would recommend hitting it once every 10 minutes for the 60 minute mash. You'll know the mash is working about 15 to 20 minutes in when the mash thins out and becomes less viscous. All right, our 60 minute mash is complete. And as you can see, the consistency of this mash has changed dramatically since we first started. It's really easy to work with now. That's how you can tell that the malted barley has done its job and converted all of the starches in the grain and corn into sugar. One thing I would suggest is that you scrape the grain away from the inside of the basket so it drains better in the next step. All right, moving on. Um, I'm gonna turn the heat off here. I'm gonna get some help from a friend. We're gonna drain the liquid out of this basket. So I'll lift it up, we'll pop some clips in, and then we'll allow this to sit and drain. Okay, so the grain has drained. I'm going to pull it out. As you can see, we ended up with about five and three quarter gallons of liquid. After transferring and fermentation, we'll be down to right about five gallons, which would be perfect for one of Clawhammer's five gallon stills. Now we have a decision to make. You can either cool this down and pitch yeast in it now, or you could bump it up to 170-ish to give it a soft pasteurization. You could even go up to 212 if you wanted to to bring it to a quick boil and then cool it back down to yeast pitching temp. I'm assuming that a lot of people watching this video don't have DSP is they're not gonna be drinking this. They're just gonna be making fuel and putting it in their lawnmower. In which case we absolutely don't need to heat this up to 170 or 212. We can just cool it down straight from here to 70-ish degrees, which is yeast pitching temp, pitch some yeast in it and move on. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. 
So what I'm doing now is hooking up a flat plate heat exchanger so we can cool this down and get it into a fermenter. All right, this is a pretty simple system. We have hot wort that comes out of the bottom of the kettle. It's circulated via the pump through a flat plate heat exchanger back into the kettle. I'm going to go ahead and get the pump circulating. I'm going to go ahead and get water circulating through my chiller here and we will get cooling. Alarm's going off here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I'm gonna turn my water off. Okay, I'm just going to pop this hose over into my fermentation bucket. Turn the pump back on. And I'm gonna transfer everything over into the bucket. I did sanitize this. Okay, two more steps and then we're done. We're gonna take a sample of the wort from the fermenter here. I'm gonna try a little bit as well. Oh yeah, it's really good, really sweet, which is what we want. Looks like we're at about seven and a half percent. If you're making distilled spirits for consumption, then you would probably want this in the eight to 10% range. If you're making fuel alcohol, you'd want the alcohol by volume to be as high as it can be, which is gonna be in the 18 to 20% range. If you wanted to bump up the, um, the alcohol content, uh, you could just add granulated sugar that will bump up the potential alcohol. I think what we'll do is probably just put a a percentage alcohol increase table in our in the article that we write for this. Last step, we are going to add some distiller's yeast. We're using White Star NGS Nutrigrain Spirit Corn Craft Distilling Yeast. This looks to be way more than we need for five gallons. So what I'm going to do is just sprinkle a little bit on top here and cross my fingers and hopefully it works. Okay, that was actually a little more than I usually use. Really, you'd wanna just like sprinkle a very fine, fine layer of the top. What I'll do now is put a lid and an airlock on this thing. Give me a second, man. Okay, I've got a lid on here. Next, I'm gonna aerate it by just shaking the bucket here. You need to do this for about 60 seconds. And then I will add an airlock with sanitizer solution in it. Uh, we'll leave this sit for a week. Once it's done, throw it in a still and run it through the still and you'll have uh, distilled alcohol. Regarding the legality of distilling, according to federal rules and regulations, personal stills of any size may be owned without any necessary permits so long as the stills are not used nor intended to be used to produce alcohol. Stills can legally be used to produce fuel alcohol and distilled spirits, so long as the owners possess either a fuel alcohol or a federal distilled spirits permit. Fuel alcohol permits are easy to get and they're available online. We will put a link in the description of this video. Remember, state laws also apply to still ownership and operation, so research the rules in your state before acquiring or using a still. All right, thanks for watching. Check out our website, clawhammersupply.com. See ya.